Hello, I'm Isaiah. Welcome back to Alcana. So it's been about let's see how many days has it been since I last played this? Five days? Actually, I don't really remember the day. Ah, this is how it feels to you know not have work and not be able to keep track of like the date and stuff. It's not a it's not a good feeling to be honest, but. What can you do? You don't even know what date it is right now. Well, I lie. I know what date it is. It's the 11th right now. But I don't remember the last time I played this. But yeah, maybe like five days ago. So, nothing really much happened in my day as per usual. But uh, I did get a continuation of the, you know, Karen situation I talked to you guys about on the last... Was it two episodes ago? Right? Um, turns out, it was not an Indonesian guy, which was quite surprising to me. I guess I don't have a very good opinion of my own people, and I apologize about that. Turns out it's actually an American. Kinda crazy to think. I thought that Americans are a lot more tolerant to this sort of stuff because they are. Like, you know, going to the gym is actually their their sort of culture. But uh, turns out it's an American, which was... Uh, which really caught me off guard. I mean, nothing really happened. Like, uh, we just... When I was trying to get the water bottle and I went past him, he just smiled awkwardly and nodded to me. But yeah, no confrontation or anything, so... You know, all is good, right? But yeah. Enough about that, let's talk about the last episode recap. On the last episode, we finished off chapter 7, which was a Misaki-focused chapter. Well, we are in her route, so of course it'll be focused on her. So it turns out that Messiah was, in fact, fighting Misaki, or, you know, dueling Misaki when they were a kid. Like, what did I say? I called that, like, on the first episode. Like, Messiah's gonna be fighting a girl instead of a guy. I mean, I kind of thought it would be Misaki in the second episode or something like that. But uh, after Inui showed up, I thought it was Inui. I also got an answer of why I feel like Inui's playstyle is boring, by the way. Inui's playstyle, if I were to compare it to something like in an RPG, she would look at the boss's attack patterns, stats, etc, etc, and she probably would deny the boss the ability to do their, like, strongest attack. <laughs> Which I guess is what speedrunners do, and I don't doubt that it takes a certain amount of skill to do that, right? But it just feels like... I don't know, it feels... unfair, like, right? To some degree. But like I said, I can't deny the fact that she's very good at what she's doing. In terms of speedrunners, I guess the fact that they try to always invent new stuff to break the game makes it pretty interesting. I guess we'll see if Inui tries to do that or not. But yeah, we are at the scene where Messiah confronts Misaki about their past and whatnot, and he's trying to train only Misaki while Mashiro and Asuka is being trained by Aoi-san. So, without further ado, let's uh, load the game. God damn it, Misaki. Hopefully the game doesn't, you know, um, fuck itself up by doing their stupid humor at the, at the start, just like what happened in the last episode. God, that triggered the hell out of me. Was that the last episode or two episodes ago, though? I kind of forgot. I call out to Misaki as she runs along the beach. Lift your knees up higher. You're losing speed. <laughs> Misaki pants harder as she raises her knees and accelerates. Don't give up. You're almost there. You've got this in the bag. Misaki finally arrives at the finish line I've marked in the sand. She staggers to a halt, throwing her head back to stare up at the sky as she gasps for air. 
Don't stop. You need to keep moving. Otherwise, the lactic acid will build up in your muscles. It may be hard, but I need you to do a light jog back to the start position. Lactic acid builds up in muscles as you exercise, which is what makes you feel fatigued. It stops being produced when you finish, but it also takes longer to drain from your muscles, which can leave a person more tired in the long run. I think I said this uh, before, but this mostly applies to people who do a lot of cardio because lactic acid only builds up in, um, you know, like uh, longer sessions of exercise. If people are, say, doing only 30 seconds or a minute of, like, sets in the gym, they won't really be needing to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Regulate their lactic acid. Though I do supplement beta alanine for my lactic acid, and that really helps since my sets at the gym usually last for about two minutes. Really, really difficult since I try to control the weights. I don't like move and swing the weights around. That's just dangerous and also not as effective. Light movement helps it drain without building up an, an excess, so any decent training program will include a cooldown period. However, While it's easier on your muscles, it's harder on your lungs. When it comes to pain, it's far harder to endure the feeling that your lungs are about to explode. I know you want to stop to catch your breath, but it's best for your muscles that you keep moving. You thought this was a warm-up? You're not doing any flying today. You're not flying today, and you're not flying tomorrow. Hell, you probably won't even fly the day after. This isn't bullying. Well, no shit. Don't just assume I'll get what you mean. If you're gonna be sick, then do it while running. I don't know if this is actually a very... Um, effective sort of training. What the hell? Quit complaining and get back to running already. If you can keep mouthing running, you're not gonna be sick. Keep mouthing running? Mouthing running? I'm guessing that's like talking while running, but... That's such a weird way to put it. I would actually stop practice if I thought she was going to be sick, mind you. As if I'd let you. I thought you were ready for the pain. Well, that was dumb. Every sport uses running. Actually... Going to the gym doesn't really involve running. Even if you want to do cardio, you can probably just do, you know, incline walking and that's enough. For the most part, anyway. Running actually um, puts too much strain on your knees, so it's better that you don't do it. Feel free to name as many exceptions as you like. You're still gonna run. I grab her hand and start dragging her at a light jog back toward the starting position. Get running, unless you want your muscles to hurt even worse. Not happening. The sand is more than enough for you, Misaki. You can even use it as a toilet when you need to. Uh, that's kind of disgusting. I don't know about that. Quit being so impatient.
You've got the wrong idea. I'm not here to break you down. What'll you do? What'll you do if you face Asuka in a match? We're talking about your body. God. You know as well as I do that this isn't the time to discuss your looks. You can stop fantasizing while you're at it. I'm your coach, and you're my player. It doesn't matter how sexy you are. I won't have any trouble looking at you. Wouldn't bother me. I can switch myself off at times like this. When girls are in PE, their sweat makes their bras stand out through their shirts. But I can put my hand on my heart and say that's never gotten a rise out of me. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't really pay attention even back when I was like a lot younger. Does that really happen? Well, then again, I think I was in a school where most of the girls don't really try too hard that they would like sweat all over and their shirts would be transparent. I think. I don't remember though. Like, this really doesn't really <laughs> like uh, ring a bell for me. I wasn't paying attention like at all. These things are all about your state of mind. Though, if I somehow accidentally peeked on girls changing, then I might find my switch being flipped without meaning to. I was so close to seeing Misaki's tits back then. Of course. Misaki peers at me with an odd look on her face. I am not! Do I really make a weird face when I think about these things? Madoka pointed it out once too. You're trying to drag this conversation so you can rest for longer, aren't you? Misaki averts her gaze. What do you think would happen if you face Asuka as you are right now? Yeah, say the fall tournament was today and you were up against Asuka in the finals. What would happen? You'd lose, 100%. You know, this is kind of interesting to think. Do people in the same school, like, face each other? It didn't happen last time. But, I don't know. Do you necessarily have to be uh, registered as part of a school or not? That's also a good question, I guess. You'd lose to Satoin Sanorichinose too. You'd probably beat Mashiro. That's the level you're on. Not at all. I'm serious. You have to get through several rounds to get to the finals. So assuming you actually made it, you'd be totally worn out. Just flying along the first line would have you out of breath, so you'd obviously lose. Isn't it going to be like the summer tournament where it's going to be... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, split into two days. You know as well as I do that you're lacking stamina. To make matters worse, you haven't practiced at all since the, since the summer tournament. It hurts not to be able to perform at full strength. And I doubt you want to have to console yourself with the thought that you could have won if you were at full strength. Mm. So you have to start by strengthening your body. And that means more cardio and getting rid of that unnecessary fat. Man, are you serious? Mm. Mm. I mean, cardio is always good. It does uh, train your, like, uh, VO2 max if you, like, uh do like super intense cardio, like what I used to do when I was Zwifting back in the day. I don't do it anymore because I feel like my cardio is like uh, already good enough. I don't really 
um, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, pant too much whenever I do, like, a gym set session, or even when I, like, sprint in a very hard session when I go back from the gym, I don't really, um, like, go out of breath all that much. This will form the basis for everything we're going to do. You won't get anywhere without it, Misaki. Though, VO2 max do get reduced if you don't train it, like, uh, a lot. Like, if you don't train it in a long time, it does lower again. Since, you know, you're, you're used to always trying to push your VO2 max and stuff. But when you're just doing things that are not pushing yourself, it's going to get lowered. Same as muscles, really. If you don't push yourself too much, you're definitely going to lose muscle. Well, I think the research says that you can lift 70% of your like volume to keep the muscle that you have already. But yeah, you're not going to grow muscles if you don't push yourself. And what I'm trying to say is that cardio is usually very hard to train if you don't have a training plan. It's a lot easier to actually train going to the gym and build muscle than it is to train like VO2 max. At least that's my experience. I know this is physically demanding practice and it's going to be hard, but... One set will comprise of 500 meter sprints followed by a break. Followed by five 200 meter sprints. We'll start with three sets. Yeah, I don't think this is very good training. Since because, uh, I, I get Misaki has the reflexes and stuff, but I don't know. I feel like a beginner should not be training this hard. There's like no transition between like what she she has been doing to what she's doing right now. So of course she's gonna break down. You promise you wouldn't say that? You always break promises this quickly? <laughs> Just get running already. I want you at full sprint. We've reached the starting position. So I let go of Misaki's hand and stop dragging her. If you've got the breath to make that joke, you've got the breath to get running. You said that like 50 times today. Well, then again, he's not really timing Misaki to do the run. So as long as she's doing her best, I guess it's still okay. Misaki brings her hands up to her face like she's scooping water and gently claps her cheeks. Sure thing. Ready, set, go! Final episode? What the? Huh. This is already the final episode? That's interesting. I guess every route will only have two chapters for themselves. I'm hmm. Well, it 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 has been quite a while, I suppose. What I mean is like the the length of the game has been quite long already. I guess that makes sense. So assuming that uh, my recording times is a good indicator of how long these chapters are. Each uh, heroin route should be around six to seven hours, right? I think that's how how long it took for me to finish off Misaki's chapter seven. Oh, give me a break. Let me see your wrist. I need to check your pulse. And I hope that the game doesn't give you like a shit ton of H scenes at the end, by the way. <laughs> Would really kill the pacing. But we haven't seen an H scene just yet, so I'm really scared that they might, you know, just give it to us, like, all at once. Misaki holds her arm out toward me. <laughs> I 
We're training your heart and lungs here, so obviously. I press my thumb against her wrist while using the clock on my phone to measure her pulse. You know, Messiah, you could have just gotten her like a cheap, uh, you know, chest strap that measures your heart rate. Misaki laughs when she's done catching her breath. Nope. Why do you keep making up these weird fetishes? Relax. That won't happen. Great. Misaki hops backward. No. Man, you sure can joke for someone who's supposedly exhausted. I pull my thumb off her wrist. That's the end of the sprints. That's it for today's practice, too. I'm a coach, not a torturer. I wouldn't push you to that point. Your pulse has reached its peak and you've already done the number of sets I asked for. More which is backfire on us. Well, he's probably talking about the maximum heart rate that you're supposedly have based on the H you are. So, if you guys don't know, um... Universally, it's like 220 minus your age. That's the maximum BPM that you're supposed to have your heart rate at. But it's a flawed, um, a flawed numerical value, really. Like, dependent on how you are very fit, it can go up and down, really. Like, say, a fat person can be age 30 and technically he's supposed to have a maximum heart rate of 190, right? But uh, because he's fat, of course, he's gonna have like uh, a higher heart rate if he's being pushed, you know, to the maximum compared to say someone who's very athletic and at the same age, he's probably gonna have a lower heart rate if he's uh, pushed at the same capacity as the fat guy. And of course, like if he's pushed to the maximum limit, it can also go past like 200 and stuff. I don't necessarily try to go past 190 because it is very taxing on your body if you go past that, by the way. Man, I've actually hold 195 for about 5 minutes or something when I was racing. Very, very intense. Like, you would, you would feel that runner's high if you've ever experienced that sort of situation. It's not the more you do, the better here. You ever heard of overworking yourself? Essentially, training too hard weakens your body. Exactly. The exercise would actually weaken your muscles. Exercise actually weakens your muscles. It's the recovery period that makes them stronger. However, if you exercise too much, you weaken your muscles more than they're able to recover. We have to wear you out to a point, then let you recover. Your muscles will grow more efficiently if you put them through cycles of strength and weakness. I was taught all this by Aoi-san. Doing 5 to 10 mile runs on a daily basis isn't an efficient way of increasing your stamina. It might be necessary in sports to require you to run for a long amount of time or cover large distances, but FC meets neither criteria. Well, like Messiah said, it depends on the sport. If you were, say, boxing or something, you'd probably <laughs> do that. I wouldn't push you that hard, though I guess that might be up to you. Misaki laughs timidly. It's your decision to make it 
to make in the end, not mine. How much you feel you need to get the hang of things before you improve, I guess. Practicing for ages and ages until you collapse is one way of getting the hang of things. Yeah, you probably would know your limits if you keep doing that, for sure. But it also isn't. I don't really know if it works, but truly strong people all seem to have experienced that sort of thing. What do you mean? Most of their time is spent just doing normal practice sessions, but they often seem to go through really brutal sessions for short periods of time. There are a lot of emotions that come with playing FC. There'll be times where you know you're overworking yourself, but you feel you have to get out there and fly. Oh, like the breakthrough when, it, when you're like already tired, but you still push yourself to do stuff. I mean, yeah, I get that. Some people say that uh, at the end of the day, this is more of a mental thing than a physical thing. I do think physical limits are much easier to reach, though, compared to mental limits. There's no need to stress over it. The most likely conclusion we'll come to is that it's bad for your fitness. We're gonna make you smarter. I'm not talking about school, dumbass. We're going to get you a mind for FC. A mind for... Actually, I guess head works too. Um, I prefer to talk about this somewhere we won't stand out. Nah, this could get embarrassing. I don't know where this is going to. It's not what you're thinking about, trust me. What's with the sudden formality? Look, I just want to go somewhere we won't be interrupted. Yeah, sounds good. I really hope the placement of the H scenes are not gonna <laughs> fuck up the story. Oh my god, fingers crossed. Quit trying to provoke me. Look, I brought something to use. I take it out of my bag. Misaki is momentarily at a loss for words. I brought two of them, but it looks like you brought your own. Oh, it's that uh, thing we won at the arcade. Misaki and I pull out the Mr. Shito plushies I won in the, in the crane game at the arcade. She points her Mr. Shito at me and bends him over. I also point my Mr. Shito at Misaki. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> Good day, Misaki-chan. Are you doing well? One's mental state is very important for one's well-being, so please be do be careful. Is this why he said it's gonna be embarrassing? When did things get so gloomy? I was just talking about using these to train your mind for a seer. Quit going on tangents already. We're gonna use the plushies to simulate FC. Why can't you just use a blackboard or, you know, a whiteboard? Or, you know, a tablet? Yup. I move Mr. Shito horizontally, as if he's flying and imitate him turning midair. We'll move them around like this and have a match between the two Mr. Shitos. Hmm, 
Yeah, I definitely could have thought of something better than this. You are a child most of the time, Misaki. Don't talk about yourself like that. I meant your mental age. Misaki starts moving Mr. Shito around willy nilly. Moving it around all over the place might help you reach some sort of religious enlightenment, but it won't help your mind. You need to take this seriously and think about what you're doing. He probably doesn't want to overwork you. Nope. You try to win all your matches through instinct. You might, but everyone else thinks way more. They do. I answer firmly to make it stick in her mind. Since you win matches through intuition, you'll just do the exact same in practice. There's a certain level of theory behind them for one. I do agree with Misaki here. Doesn't mean that you don't, you know, need to know a lot of the strategies that, you know, are pretty common. I trust your ability to make decisions in the heat of the moment, Misaki. But what I need to teach you is how you how to look at the match as a whole. Mastering this will let you control the field and control your opponent. Misaki stares at me through upturn upturned eyes. I happened to check some FC fan sites and discovered that Inui had been nicknamed the Monarch. Monarch of the Skies? I think it's Monarch, right? Not Monarch? Yeah, Monarch. After not only winning the Shito tournament, but also the national tournament several days later. Accounts of the game don't seem to have worked out what Inui's playstyle is, but the nickname captured her essence perfectly. I've watched videos, replayed the match inside my head. I even went as far as to get Shindo-san's number from Michinose so I could call him up and discuss it. Now, I'm sure that I can use these Mr. Shitos to teach Misaki about the newest play style without having witnessed it more than once. For some reason, you always fall back on instinct when flying. At least practicing here, you get the time to calm down and think things through. It takes too long to instruct you unless we're already on the same page. There's no time for more than brief instructions in an actual match. Also, if you're focusing too much on what your second is saying, you won't be focusing enough on your opponent. Even though the best players still use seconds, they think things through for themselves. You could say they see nothing but their opponent during the match. Yeah, that's what I feel like the um the competition should be. Like seconds are good and all, but at the end of the day, you gotta like trust in your own ability and like uh, decision making. You were talking about fear and stuff after your match with Ichinose, right? Mm. There are things you discover about your opponent during matches that are hard to put into words. What's important is how you decide to act when you feel those things. That wasn't something a second could instruct you on. Yes, you need to be following your second's instructions. But at the end of the day, a second's opinion is no more than that, an opinion. The ultimate decision is in your hands, Misaki. You're the one who has to decide how to fly in the moment, and that's why we need to train your mind for FC. Misaki gives a slightly exasperated nod. Okay, let's start. I look around Misaki's room. Um, we'll use a string for your lamp as the first. This part of the bookshelf is the second. The handle for your closet is third. And that stain in the wall is fourth. What stain? You guys see any stain? I don't. Is he talking about the top left corner there? Near the 
uh, like, uh, like frame thing? Could be. And I'm back. Sorry about that. Had to take a package. My banana fritters are here, which I will be eating after this. Less sass, more serious. Your Mr. Shito is you. My Mr. Shito is Inui. Go ahead and try. Okay, line up by first. Misaki bops her Mr. Shito over. I told you that Mr. Shito was you. Quit fooling around and take this seriously. Take this seriously. I mean, I actually don't mind her being playful like this. <laughs> I do think Messiah is the one that's uh, being way too serious. This is like, what, the first day? Calm down, Messiah. If that was meant to be serious, then you better do that next time you meet the new air. Why the hell do we both have to grope her? We'll get kicked out of the venue before the tournament even begins. Well, do something about that. Okay, we're starting now. Start. <laughs> this is a pretty interesting um, chibi CG. At least pretend this is real and say that you're going to the second line. I'm begging you. Well, I guess that counts as serious. Masaki skips to the line between the bookshelf and the closest handle. Okay, I'm moving straight forward. We need to take the game seriously. There's no need to pretend to be the persons themselves. Inui doesn't talk like that. Why would Inui ever say that? Masaki starts rotating her Mr. Shito. I touched second, scoring my first point. And now I'm using the repulsion from it to accelerate. I fly above, I fly up above the line. Inui goes along with your dogfight. This is actually a pretty good illustration of what the hell is happening, actually. Like, I thought that when you reach the boy, you accelerate in a 90 degree angle toward the next boy and not actually go up, so this is interesting. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Don't break character. A reversal is a technique where you slip to the side of an opponent coming at you from above to position yourself above them instead. Inui reaches out a hand and taps you in the head. Easily. She has the height advantage. Remember, reversals are difficult. When your opponent is at least somewhat competent, you have to focus in her timing and be unpredictable. If you don't master those two skills, you won't get anywhere. If Misaki was facing Mashiro, she'd be able to pull it off. But against Inui, she might succeed one time out of th 10 if that. Inui's 
さんは私の背中を追ってきますこれで泥沼のドッグファイトあり地獄に Not likely Inui-san keeps her distance while she chases you Observing She doesn't accept your invitation Inui focuses on ensuring that you don't climb any higher than her, rather than trying to score points on you. Masaki starts bumping her Mr. Shito into mine. Nope. You're good, but I've never seen Inui actually engage in a dogfight, so I can't make a comparison. Take a moment to think about your positions. Both of you are facing down toward the water. You're trying to get vertical, so the most you'll manage is a, is a forward bent posture. Oh, sorry, I thought she was then. We're trying to develop your mind here, remember? Try thinking about it for a moment. What do you have to do to score points in dogfights? I think he's talking about literally. I'm telling you to think, not clear your mind. This is important. It's the first thing any beginner is taught. Yes, it is. Masaki brings her Mr. Shito level with mine. An obvious conclusion, given both at their backs pointing upward. Inverted flight is difficult, so you'd have your back facing her too. Yeah, probably. Misaki looks dumbfounded. Because everyone's fixated on the, on the idea that dogfights are all about continuous flight and flying as fast as possible. Don't give me that. You're the one who's been calling it a simple strategy. Both students and teachers are under the same impression. No one questions it. Because FC dogfights are based on actual warplanes. When two airplanes engage in battle, that's called a dogfight. I actually know that because <laughs> uh, there's a streamer, Isoki, who plays a lot of slots. <laughs> and there's a slot which uh, has like uh, airplanes battling each other, which is kind of interesting. And some of the things that they do is actually a dogfight. FC adopted that as a, as, as a part of the sport, turning them into continuous flight dogfights. It's because, unlike helicopters, planes can come to a stop in the air. FC has a pretty short history, so it's easy to research, and if you do, and if you do, you'll see that they use to award points based on touching your opponent anywhere. Totally. That's why they limited it to only scoring when you touch your opponent's back. Otherwise, fighters would just stop moving and start throwing jabs at each other from the front. Misaki shuts her eyes and imagines it. Yeah, which would be pretty interesting, but it would probably be less beneficial for people who are not fighters. Apparently, that's what ended up happening. The whole point of the sport is that flying is fun. So just coming to a stop and having a fist fight in the air ruins it. That's why they amended the rules. Because the players have to try and circle around each other to score. That makes the flying more intense and exciting to watch. The current rule set was designed to make as much of a show out of flying as possible. Since it's recommended to everyone, 
They all take it as the correct way to fly. She's just doing everything she can to win. As long as she's not breaking any rules, no one can criticize her. Yeah, which also reinforces my, like, you know, thinking about how she is playing the optimal way and uh, using it to her advantage. Which is okay, like I said, but it's not entertaining. And it's not fun, at least to me anyway. They might, but it won't happen before we graduate. And there are a lot of people who wouldn't want the rules changed anyway. Asuka loves seeing Inui in action. Misaki smells glumly. Anyway, back to the practice session. That's the strategy that Shindo-san tried. It's the first thing anyone would think of in that situation. It's difficult to look above you while you're flying at full speed, right? Her chest would be facing the water, meaning she'd have to twist her entire body to see above her. But Inui can see you perfectly from her position. Obviously, I would. But I'm sure you realize that hearing information about someone's position is different from actually being able to see them. So, Inui, who has the height advantage, comes down from above and attempts to touch your head. Inui doesn't follow. Instead, she just slowly closes the gap between you. She allows you to do so for a moment before chasing after you. Masaki has ended up crouching down, her Mr. Shito practically rubbing against the, against the floor. Now, just like her, you can only move horizontally. You getting Ichinose into that position was just a result of your actions, but Inui calculated this. So, what'll you do now? If she did, she'd be giving Inui free access to third, making it 2 0. While you're doing that, Inui starts aiming straight for third. You can't catch her. Inui touches the third, so the score's 2 0. She uses the recoil to accelerate. Yup. Misaki nods. Seems she finally understands. Exactly. No, there isn't. But it has nothing to do with your dogfighting technique. It's simply a matter of whether you know the strategy or not. Apparently, yeah. Well, to counter this sort of strategy, I guess you have to be doing stuff that is not part of her plan, right? And also, I guess, uh, what's actually a good strategy to use here? Hmm. She's probably the type of, like, uh, Skywalker who watches their opponents fight. Right? So I assume she watches people fight and then try to gauge how much their max speed, etc, etc is. So you could also try to... Um... 
you know, like what's the word I'm looking for? There's a word for for this, uh, but I I don't remember the name. It's like when you're making a second account <laughs> in a freaking MOBA game. <laughs> uh, what's the word I'm looking for? God damn it! What's that word? I know that word, but it's just uh, out of my lips for some reason. Fuck! It's annoying me, the fact that I don't remember that word. But you guys understand what I'm talking about. Sandbagging! There you go, sandbagging. You gotta sandbag in your fights while still be able to win uh, in, your, in your fight. And then you try to use your real potential on the next fight. So, partially the reason why Shindo lost in his fight with Inui is because she probably... Um... Knows what the hell Shindo could do when facing Asuka. How will you break out of the situation? I don't have a clue. Sure am. So try and think about it. Misaki rocks her Mr. Shito left and right as she ponders. Yeah, the problem with this sport in general is that everything is way too limited. Like, uh, the maximum speed that you can get depends on your, like, graph shoes. The technique that you can do is probably gonna be useless unless you're actually able to engage her in a dogfight. So, there's too many limiting factors that would force her to do something out of her scenario or out of her script. Which is why I kind of dislike this uh, sort of situation or this sort of sport. Like I said, I'm the passionate kind of guy, so... I believe that uh, surpassing your opponent during the heat of the battle is actually something very interesting. After a long while of trying, Misaki suddenly holds Mr. Shito above her head. She throws him at the wall. Hey! The speed of light is incomparably faster than Ma's speed. You do realize that, realize that right? Take this seriously! What the hell is Ma light speed anyway? Some new unit of measurement? Pretty cruel to throw an extension of yourself into a wall. What about it? Yeah, I considered that myself. Misaki shrugs her shoulders. It might. If you were playing Asuka, it wouldn't work on Inui. Inui managed to beat Prez in a contest of speed. She is a speeder after all. Those unfamiliar graph shoes Inui was wearing briefly come to mind. I wonder how they were tuned. Probably. She tried racing Shindo-san when their match first started, but she soon gave up and switched to this tactic. Let's keep going. It's easier to understand when you're actually moving Mr. Shito around. I'm surprised they're still continuing this after what she did. Before long, Misaki actually ended up putting in the effort required to enjoy our simulated Mr. Shito session. Oh, I guess it is gonna be ending. We come to a stop in front of the gate. 
The sweet smell of soy sauce is wafting over from what I guess you'd describe as the main residence. <laughs> yup. Smells like home cooking, alright. Though I do get why she finds a guy smelling this at her place embarrassing. It does? Smells delicious, whatever it is. If I get the chance. Well, joining the dinner would be embarrassing, but I don't think just smelling it is weird. Yeah, and explaining everything would be a pain. Her grandma would definitely ask if I'm her boyfriend. Guys walk girls home because it's not safe for them to be walking around alone at night. It'd be weird if you took me home now. Seriously, it's fine. You don't need to worry. Yeah, we'll see each other tomorrow anyway. Later. She hurriedly grab, grabs hold of my sleeve. What's up? Yup. Yeah? Y you are. She said that's it, not it's just. It's at this point she realizes she's still holding my sleeve and quickly lets go. I get it. Okay. Good night. We wave at each other as I walk off. Is that supposed to show something about the fact that, you know, she might have feelings for us? I don't know. Feels kind of awkward to me, actually. <laughs> Come on! This is the home stretch. Get those thighs up higher. Don't quit on, don't quit on me now. I want to see the sand getting kicked up behind you. Don't run into sand, by the way. That's really dangerous. Just run into gym. Or like a, a park or something. This is it! Give it after everything you've got. Squeeze out that last bit of juice. Masaki crosses the finish line marked on marked out on the sand. She holds her wrist out as she pants her breath. I check her pulse. It's time. You can fly now. Misaki grabs the bottle that we'd stuck in the sand earlier. After gulping down some water, she says, Would I lie to you about this? Misaki grabs hold of the tum of her tummy as she, had she has a sudden stomach ache. What's wrong? She suddenly leaps into the air like she'd been hev a heavily compressed spring. You're really pumped about this, huh? In her excitement, she slaps me on the chest. How many days did we skip, by the way? I wish they'd tell you. Don't call this roleplay. I pull my phone out of my pocket. 
Something like that. You need someone to practice against. Otherwise, we'll be stuck doing the basics. That's why I'm calling in some help. <laughs> you know, with everything that happened so far, Messiah still not flying and helping Misaki is kind of a... Uh, what is it? Kind of unfair, don't you think? Right? I feel like it's a bit unfair that he's not doing everything in his, like, skill set to train Misaki. There's a booming laugh as Press strikes a pose before heading this way. Like, Prez is probably a good training partner because he is a speeder. But I feel like Messiah would probably be a better training partner for sure. Because of how much more he can do than just speed up. But then again, maybe he thought to himself that he hasn't been flying for so long, his skills might not be up to par. Maybe. Yeah. Thanks for coming. I'm sorry. I ruined everything you worked so hard to create. Doesn't really seem like that to me. I'm sure he'd be happier if we all stuck together. But he's doing his best not to act all depressed. I feel so guilty. Yes, I will. What else can I say? The two sides of our club aren't fighting at least. Press turns to face Misaki and puffs out his chest with pride. Shirase-san snuck up behind us. God, please don't do anything weird, guys. Press and Shirase-san draw close to each other. They really need to stop with this running gag. <laughs> Shirase-san starts stroking Prez's inner thighs. Misaki turns to glare at me. Don't be so mean. Well, they are weird, I can't deny that. The two of them beckon to Misaki. What is with you and Kinks today? Anyway, they're not looking for a sacrifice. It's definitely creepy at the very least. Please, no. Masaki pulls in the hem of my shirt. Ukimuki-san! 
Ushiro? His sister? <laughs> yeah, I assume this is his sister. I just don't know why she's so flat. I mean, I guess in anime world, they probably are wearing that thing that suppresses your breast size or something. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. But there's no way that it can be that flat, you know? Come on, man. And she's like barely wearing anything, so it's definitely going to be noticeable that she has a bulge in her chest. Up in the skies, behind Masaki, is a Skywalker wearing a mask. <laughs> Don't be so rude to your practice partner. I assume she's also using some sort of voice changer? I don't know, maybe my my guess that this is uh, Shirase's little sister is actually wrong. She does have long hair, doesn't she? How does she hide that with the mask? Then again, this is anime. Mask Skywalker turns their back to us, puts their hands in their hips, and laughs like some kind of super villain. Then, they descend next to Shirase-san. <laughs> Misaki looks perplexed. Yeah, this is his little sister. Why are you panicking, Shirase-san? His eyes dart around. I can't believe she has the gall to actually act like this, <laughs> considering how she's supposedly shy and timid. <laughs> what a weird trio. Masaki looks them up and down and one by one. The Misaki Comeback Project, created in secret in the dark web. She's clearly being sarcastic. Project member number one, Masaya Hinata. Mass Skywalker points at Misaki with a snap. Did you do something to them? <笑>そう思ってるのはお前だけだとしたら。いえ。覆面の正体、その謎に悩み苦しむがよい。悩み苦しむほど気になる謎かな。もしかして私の知ってる人? Masaki stumbles a little at Mass Skywalker's nonchalant answer. Whatever you say, guys. <laughs> well, all that aside, 
We are. Dark Skywalkers don't exist, I think. I explained what was going on to Shirase-san a few days ago, and when he heard that you needed practice partners, he invited Mask Skywalker to join us. The rules say your second can be a student at another school. That's so weird though, shouldn't your, like, you know... Shouldn't your second be someone intimate like what Messiah was talking about back when we first finished the chapter 1, right? Because you know, sometimes when you're not really close with your second, you're not gonna be able to do what they're do- or you're not gonna be able to do what they want that well. Well, I guess if they're only there to pinpoint the enemy's location, they don't technically need to be very intimate. Be Masaki bows and gives a completely out of place reply, presumably overwhelmed by Mass Skywalker's personality. Man. She kind of just said she was looking forward to being killed, huh? I was thinking we'd start with some light warm-up exercises, then practicing practicing with Prez. If that's okay with you, of course, Prez. I was under the impression the summer break was a really important time for seniors. He's totally gonna flunk his university entrance exams. Well, a year is okay, Messiah. Heck, two years is probably okay. You can try to get a job or something in the meantime. Masaki bows to Prez. Prez grins. Allow me to explain the purpose of our practice sessions. Our aim is to allow you to counter a new aim. Even if you can't reach the same level of play as her, this will largely come down to technique. I imagine this is also Asuka's intention. If you can't counter her, you just get crushed. But if you can't counter her, you get the chance to make use of all the techniques you've learned. Yup. It's never a waste, damn it. You guys still have the next year. Come on now. Out of all the regional and national matches Inu has participated in, Prez gave her the closest match. If we, if we want you to be able to play effectively against her, we need to come up with a way to stop her. That's why you need to practice with someone who can fl who can fly on her level. I know. You practice a lot with them in the past, so you know what to expect, right? She can probably read him like a book at this point, meaning it won't be too hard for her to stop him. That's why we're not doing normal practice. Press will take to the field first and do two or three laps to build up speed before you enter. Also, my headset will be connected to Prez, but not to you. You have to use your own judgments up there. Exactly. Don't forget, you need to make decisions with the entire match in mind, not just the current situation. One example is deciding where to jump to after you're, you're overtaken. Press flies past. So there will be times where your your best option is to skip two lines ahead instead of just one. Try thinking about a bunch of things today. Right, let's get started. It's been a while since you last flew, so we'll start with 10 minutes of field, field flying.
Misaki flies up toward the field. I knew this would happen. Brez is having a field day up there. Yeah. All Prez ever cared about was flying as fast as possible, which made his feints awkward. He also had a, had a habit of making white stretching movements to prevent a loss of speed while overtaking someone, so it almost felt like he was reluctant to do so. But now... They're only simple feints, pretending to go one way before going the other. Hell, he's only really using his head and his eyes to, ma to make them. And yet... It's enough to make Misaki groan in frustration as she gets past again and again. As simple as his moves are, his sheer speed leaves her unable to counter him. If he'd mastered this style earlier, he might have gotten pretty far in the summer tournament. Nah, he's, his first fight is still with Inui, so there's no way he would have gotten past the first uh, battle. That's what happens when you go a while without flying. It doesn't help that I told her to think things through while flying. I doubt she's ever done that before, so her mind and body will be totally out of sync. About what? Support, huh? I can feel emotion behind Shirase-san's words as he continues to look up at the sky. Well, if I were just a normal guy, yes, Shirase-san. <laughs> to be completely honest, I do think Masaki probably has the best figure. Can't deny that. No! Obviously not. I don't know if you'll be able to understand my reason. Masaki is me. If she can't fly, then neither can I. That's why I'm supporting her. Shirase-san drags in air like he's smoking a cigarette. I actually don't know what Fukenzen mean. Mass Skywalker suddenly interjects. Uh, come again? If you say so... Shirase-san grins. No one asks for your opinion. You'll get your time, okay? You get your time. Why are you so worked up about this ma mask? I don't care about tournaments or any of that crap. Well, he's looking past that. Yeah, I am doing this for her future. I look up at the field. Misaki's movements are sluggish. She's unable to keep up with Prez's speed in the slightest. Looks like she's really trying to follow my instructions and use her head while flying. Her reactions are coming in moments too slow, but that's to be expected when she's trying to think things through. But that's not my main motivation. <laughs> I'm doing this because I want to. Maybe it'll end as badly as you suggest, Shirase-san. But that doesn't change the fact that I have to do this. Um, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter how things end up. I just know that not doing anything would leave me far more miserable. I prefer it if that were the case. I truly mean that. If the fire was already lit, then I'd be running hot right now. Somebody, seriously, light that fire for me. 
You have to do it yourself, Messiah. Asking for someone to help you is uh, never the answer. Right now, Misaki and I are just smoldering, letting off clouds of black smoke. If we don't get ourselves fired up, I don't think we'll ever get anywhere. Shirase-san smiles with what seems like both exasperation and admiration. You did say that. Why is that? Your advice is more than good enough for me. Yeah, I get it, I get it, you're jealous. Um, you keep saying that, like, did you even listen to me? Yeah, no. I heard you the first time, but the only one I can coach right now is Misaki. I'd really appreciate the help. Thanks. I don't know anything about Mass Skywalker, but if Shirase san's friends with the with them, they can't be a bad person. Now then. Prezes flying circles around Misaki up on the field. I've never seen anything quite like it. I switch on my headset. Prez, come back down. Practice is over. Okay. He points at the ground, signaling to Misaki that it's time to descend. Misaki gives a small nod and follows him. Prez turns off his graph shoes and strikes a bodybuilder pose as he lands. That's how it'll be at first. The more you practice, the less of a gap there'll be between your mind and your body. The idea is to get you to get your thoughts and your feelings in sync. Right now you feel, but you don't think. Right. Time to get prepared for the next practice session. Shirase-san takes out a laptop. She glances over at me. Really? I should be the one modifying them, but it's more practical to get Shirase-san to do it. He's way faster. If you don't mind, Shirase-san. Shirase-san connects his laptop to Misaki's graph shoes. So do you use a cable to connect them to your laptop? I'm gonna change your initial velocity to that of a speeder's while keeping your acceleration the same as it is, a fighter's. Nope, there isn't. But that's what we want. You really should mind that. I can't quite put my finger on why, but I don't think they're evil either. If anything, they're sort of heroic, even if they're forcing the act a bit too hard. Okay, allow me to explain the purpose of this practice session. This time, Mask will be imitating Inui's tactics. We'll have you flying slowly so that you can focus on seeing how you move. Exactly. We also need you to observe how Mask moves at the same time. 
If you were just flying normally, you'd never take the information in, right? I'll be your second, Misaki. But I want you to focus on thinking for yourself as you fly. Misaki courteously bows. She wobbles as she ascends into the sky. This is fine for now. We can bump things up slowly as we practice. Okay, if you could start above mask and you below Misaki. Don't sweat it, that's only natural. Regain your positioning and take it from the top. One more time. Her opponent has the advantage of position at all times, so she can't let up for a second. Yeah. True, but this should help us to build a strategy and open a path forward. If Misaki can keep even with keep even with Inui in the positioning battles, she can use her dogfight skills to pull out a win. Yeah. How we go about doing it? Well, there are three options. Which one should I push Misaki to choose? I'm not sure yet. Are those options gonna be like the bad ending and stuff? I guess we'll see. I don't even know if this game has a bad ending. I mean, I did get the bad ending of not choosing the girl, but I don't know if the heroine routes themselves have a bad ending. Good work. You must be tired. We gathered together after practice to talk about our future plans. Not just scheduling, but details about how we'll counter Inui and the like too. It took so long that it's gotten dark out. We did have a lot to discuss. In the end, I think there are three major strategies we can use to beat Inui. You're the one who has the ultimate decision on what we do, Misaki. That's why I needed you to understand Inui's playstyle. The first option is to go all in on becoming a speeder. Exactly. You'd use your speed to take the lead right from the start and never let, let up. You'd be at a disadvantage if she managed to stop you, but I imagine Inui will start the match by challenging you to a contest of speed. If you can get off to a good start and just keep going, you could pull it off. Go all in on becoming a fighter, the kind of player who can win a dogfight no matter their positioning. Exactly. I think it's possible. Inui's tactics revolve around putting up a wall near a wall her opponent can't get past. Exactly. I think that's the option Asuka will pick. Asuka's good at air kick turns, right? 
That means she's already good at techniques that take advantage of the membrane's features. I doubt it'll be long before she can pull off a cobra and other high-level moves. It's tough unless you can sense anti-gravitons with your skin. Though there are other techniques we can use. Because being able to pull off non standard tactics like consecutive air kick turns will probably confuse Inui enough to be able to steal the height advantage from her. Become like Inui. Employ the strategy of keeping the height advantage. Yeah, so if you lose it, you either move over to the next line or try to get back on top from below. Though I'm still not exactly sure how you'd do that. Wouldn't surprise me. I think you need to pick one of the three options sooner rather than later. You never know. You might surprise yourself. Back when we first met, she ended up flying even more beautifully than me. Misaki shakes her head, however. So you'll take the fighter route then. Misaki shakes her head again. True, she probably don't, doesn't want to go the same path as Asuka too. Okay. It's hard to see how Misaki could become the kind of fighter or a speeder she'd need to be to best Inui. They don't exist yet. That was a weird transition. Suddenly, color from <laughs> gray. However, Inui does exist. There's a basis to work from. Mm-hmm. Good. Hmm? Misaki takes half a step closer to me. She's now slightly too close for a normal conversation. What's up? I feel this is uh, very weird. There's no build-up to this. I swear to goodness, the romance in this game is so weird. <laughs> Unlike uh, Rika or Asuka, I guess, this feels a bit too unnatural. I get that Messiah and Misaki's personality clash pretty well. But, uh, I don't know. Am I the only one that feels like when it comes to love, there needs to be, you know, some sort of trigger or something? Am I thinking too deeply into how someone can like someone? Huh? Huh? Hold on. Like you just said, but this doesn't... Like, how did you end up? That's not where the conversation... Shit. Quit trying to pick a fight. I wanted to be the first to say it. I was. I recently realized how much I like you, Misaki. Man, when I say those words, it feels so hollow. Misaki fl flusters and awkwardly nods. Yeah, now you're getting me confused too. I think so, but I wasn't sure. I knew. What do you mean, good? Misaki lets out a little laugh. Face as stiff as a board. Yeah, 
Okay, I guess. Okay. Here goes nothing. Um, Misaki, I... Why are you laughing? Her reaction itself is pretty genuine, but I feel like there's just not enough time for us to develop a feeling, you know? You're making this really hard. I grab hold of Misaki's arms. I'm in the same boat. You know, I'm pretty surprised there hasn't been a typo in this uh, episode. Good job, Nekonyan. Your arms are warm too, Misaki. They're about the same. But anyway... We look each other right in the eyes. Hers are clouded over, pulling me in toward them with no hopes of escaping. Time continues to flow as we just stand there, eyes locked. Uh, don't hyperventilate, please. Masaki's breathing has grown ragged. She's trembling slightly. You okay? Okay. My throat is dry. The words stuck right at the back of it. I force myself to swallow my saliva. You're making this super awkward, Misaki, goddammit. I really like you, Misaki. Will you go out with me? I'm gonna kiss you. Misaki suddenly tenses up even harder. I'm gonna kiss you. I feel like that's pretty fast, Messiah. I'm kissing you. She's not wrong. I've never heard of anyone suffocating from a kiss before. I have no idea, Misaki. Not sure, but I think you can. Why'd you scream? Masaki leans forward like someone's pulling on her head. I lean in as well. <laughs> Am I supposed to voice act that? <laughs> Our lips touch, and in that instant, her seemed to pucker up a little. You're making, it, you're making it sound way too sexual, Masaki. Masaki is breathing hard through her nose. Ah! Hmm. <laughs> I'm probably making this way too awkward too, goddammit. I shouldn't voice act this shit. I move my lips ever so slightly. My heart skips a beat. 
Her lips are so soft. The way they're pressed up against mine feels so good. Kissing feels amazing. Sure, whatever, Messiah. You always hear people say that, but I thought they just meant on an emotional level. But that's not it at all. There's a certain emotional part to it, sure, but... I didn't know that simply having someone else's lips against your own could feel good on a physical level. No one ever told me. That's why I'm completely taken aback. I mean, I've never kissed anyone. Well, I have... Uh, kissed uh, a guy before for some event to get money at my, <laughs> at my friend's uh, party before. But, you know, it doesn't really feel like a kiss. And... I don't know. Doesn't really feel like anything, really, right? When I was doing it. No emotions and, you know, it was just some physical contact. I can clearly feel how her lips are trembling ever so slightly. I do think it's definitely more the emotional level thing. Like, what is what Messiah is feeling? I want more. What will happen if, I keep go if we keep going? Just trying to imagine it makes the back of my head feel ready to melt. What am I doing? Imagining kissing while I'm already kissing. I can't believe I want her this badly. I take both my lips to Misaki's top lip. And then, I hold it between them. This is some intense kissing scene. Every time I cover it in her lips, Misaki struggles for breath. It's all kind of sexual. Hard to believe kissing alone can get us like this. Unable to take it any longer, I finally lean away. Masaki's tortured breaths blow over my face. Masaki gives me a nervous grin. What? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> I don't know how to actually voice act that. Oh, I guess they're actually pecking each other now. I gently peck her on the lips. Just got the order mixed up. Can't take what? Misaki is trembling so much that I can see her shaking. What's so bad about it? Yeah, I don't understand how you're feeling this, Misaki. <laughs> so I'm not even gonna try to understand how you're feeling. I really like you too, Misaki. That's not pathetic. Hell, it's anything but. Can you stop panting, Misaki? Misaki starts pounding my chest before bumping her, her head against it. If I was in Masaya's shoes right now, I'd be like, Misaki, you're way too easy. Come on, calm your head down. Jesus. Sounds good to me. What the fuck? 
I guess I'm not really the type of guy that can be truly devoted, even when I do like someone, right? I do feel like this is only a thing that happens if you're uh, young, that you can be truly devoted to someone or have your emotions overflow so much that it clouds your judgment, etc. I feel like even if I like someone, there would be a part of me, or actually a lot of me, that would also put a lot of logic into why I like that certain someone, right? And like just kissing and stuff wouldn't really like do anything to me really, other than the fact that it's a form of or a show of affection. You're actually aware of that? I just feel like love for the most part, like in a lot of entertainment that we consume, is super exaggerated in the way they have to show it. It's fine. I love everything about you. Yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, uh, don't inflate my ego, Misaki. Why don't you want to say that? Her annoying side has surfaced already. I'm gonna kiss you again. I just don't think I'll be able to sleep tonight if I don't. I'll be gentle this time. It, it is pretty funny seeing her reaction, but god, this is so weird. Why was there a guy in the middle there? Here I go. Misaki stands as still as she was when Shirase-san was tuning her grass shoes. I don't really know how I'm meant to go about a gentle kiss. However... I think as long as I take things slowly, everything will turn out fine. I'm sure my feelings will get through to her if I do. And right now, I want to be gentle. And so, I convince myself that going slow will make that happen. Time passes as I press my lips against hers and take things slow. You good, Misaki? Misaki's nasal breathing is more relaxed than it was before. I part from her. I love you, Misaki. <laughs> Misaki nods, her face bright red. Uh, I won't. Let me do this properly, though. Misaki, will you go out with me? I mean, she never did answer before. Misaki nods, her expression completely serious. I have expected the game to just suddenly go to an H scene there. <laughs> okay, I'll actually do the scene and then we're gonna call it an episode. Thank you for not being an H scene instantly, game. Is this game gonna be all like, love is gonna transcend Misaki into surpassing Inui now? I hope it doesn't just boil down to that. It would be very like anticlimactic. Shirase-san looks up in wonder as Misaki and Mask go at it on the field above. Yeah, yeah she's improved tons. Yeah, but that's not all we have to worry about. Right, 
as things stand, she's just jumping to the next line whenever she finds herself at a height of disadvantage. It won't. It might allow Misaki to keep things close, but she'd still have no hope of winning. Assume that Misaki started off by jumping lines, allowing Inui to get the first point. Misaki would have the height advantage on the second line, so Inui would jump to the next line, sacrifice the boy to Misaki, and it would be 1-1. It would be Inui would then have the height advantage on the third line, since she got there first, making Misaki jump, resulting in a 1-2 score. Misaki having the height advantage on the fourth line would make Inui jump again, bringing it to 2-2. Then we'd be back at the first line, with Inui having the height advantage. Misaki would have to jump lines once again, and the score would be 2 3. Not being able to do dog Not being able to dogfight in the first line means she'll always be trailing one point behind. We've restored her draft shoes to their normal settings this time to try out various methods of regaining the height advantage from below. However, this has mostly resulted in her trying to blast through on sheer force alone. Sometimes, she'll throw a feint to the right before ascending to the left. Others, she'll openly broadcast her feint to throw Mask Skywalker off balance before pulling off a reversal. Every so often, she succeeds and manages to regain the height advantage, but... Yeah, it might work as a surprise attack, but it's just too straightforward. Got any suggestions? Why no one ever think of it before, huh? Press might be right on this one. I can hear Misaki panting for breath through my headset as I watch her shoulders heaving. How would Asuka be faring if she was going through all this? I know I shouldn't compare them, but... I can't stop myself from wondering. If Asuka were up there, she may have another flash of inspiration and figure out a way to break through. Asuka's the type of person who can do it. Someone who can fly in a way that exceeds my expectations. Can Misaki do that too? I knew comparing them was wrong. Misaki has her own strengths. It's my job to bring them to the surface. Press suddenly looks behind him. What's up? Huh? Oh, sorry Shirase-san. Shindo-san is briskly walking toward us. Hello, what brings you here? ふっ、昔より。それに青柳君はFCを辞めるわけじゃないんだろう。当然。their conversation ends without me being able to tell how serious either of them were actually being. Then, Shindo-san turns to face me. So, did you need something? Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to actually pause recording because there was something going on outside of my neighborhood. And it was like super loud. So we are back though. Only took a couple of seconds for them to pass by. I think they were like playing some sort of uh, cultural instrument. I don't know what they're called actually. But yeah, let's continue on. Did I read this text, I wonder, before I pause the recording? I think I did. He arches backward like he's just been hit by lightning. What's the matter? 
謎の覆面選手覆面をかぶっているのに強くもトリッキーでもない謎の覆面選手じゃないか Please don't say that. You're making me feel, feel sorry for them. It's depressing enough that they have no tricks up their sleeve despite the mask they're wearing, without bringing their strength into it, too. They still have a lot to learn, but they take their practice really seriously. They may be a little on the eccentric side, but I take my hat off to them for their hard work and determination. Why can't this just say, like,、uh, he or she? I assume、uh, that's actually the localization not wanting to think that Messiah is saying that this is a he. So that's kind of like、uh, interesting. What's going on? Because I for sure know that Japanese people don't really care about pronouns for the most part. I'm not scheming, and this isn't part of my strategy. <laughs> I don't even know who Mask Skywalker really is. I asked Shirase san to help out with Misaki's practice, and he brought them along. You should direct your questions to him. What a fucking liar. Shino san looks between the two of us. We're not up to anything. He said that man is like a god to me. Press strike, suppose. Shino san starts feeling up his own shoulders. Oh, sorry. I was actually like thinking something else. <laughs> like,、uh, I'm not gonna lie, I am a muscle head, but I do think that Prez is not really a muscle head. He's like what other people think a muscle head acts like, you know? If you get what I'm trying to say. So, people that、uh, write Prez probably d o e s n t even know people who exercise a lot and whatnot. Because. It's too unnatural, man, for him to just keep looking at muscles and shit. And they really do like、uh, doing this skit. God, this skit is so weird. Well, at least I'm going to end the episode. With finishing this skit, so I'm not gonna start the next episode having to go through this painful scene. <laughs> Prez also reaches out. <laughs> Prez and Shirase san relentlessly rub their hands all over Shindo san. <laughs> When did you guys name yourselves that? Before long, Misaki has flown down to us. She seems real surprised. Misaki hangs her head in disappointment. 
になってしまうのも時間の問題かあんまマサヤさんがムキムキ聖人それはそれでいいと思う What? 覆面さんは割と筋肉好きですかそれはそれでまあセクシーかも I guess she's into BL セ,セクシーとか言うな恥ずかしいではないか死ぬがよい全書します As the conversation heads in its usual direction, I clap my hands to bring it to a stop. Okay, that's enough nonsense. You came here for a reason, right, Shindo san? Hinata kun to Tobisawa kun ga bets kodo steru to kite ne. Kininate minikitanda. Do ste boku ni koyo kakete kure na kata no kana. I'm sorry. I thought about speaking to you, of course, but I didn't want to turn this into a whole big thing. Having Prez and Mask Skywalker help out is no big deal, but having someone as good as Shindo san helping, helping could have come with a lot of. with a whole host of problems. Him coming to help us out would have been big news, which probably would have brought the split in our FC club to light. I can't even begin to imagine what kind of a, of a messy situation that would turn out to be. Besides, it would have been inconsiderate to the students at Takafuji. <laughs> どうしてですか参加してくださいようちの学園で倉科君が練習してるからね僕は倉科君とも練習試合をしないようにしてるんだ Why not? だって飛沢君と倉科君が試合をすることになった時僕が勝敗に関わったらよくないと思うんだ You sure you're not overthinking this? いやこう見えて僕は口が軽くてね Oh, so that's what it is. Asuka's training to beat Misaki, and Misaki's training to beat Asuka. Shindo san's making sure he doesn't leak what's going on in either of their sessions. What's that? Shindo san pulls a, pulls a laptop out of his bag. Asuka's match? From a corner of my eye, I see Misaki clen- Oh, sorry. Uh, twitchy fingers. <laughs> I see Misaki clenching her fists. I'm scared, but I don't have time to confirm things. So, who is her opponent? Yeah, I feel like the, like, uh, the romance in this game is so tacked on. It feels like only during those moments where it's like nighttime where they can, like, tell each other that they love each other and whatnot. It's impossible for romance to not, like, seep out into something as heavy as, like, training like this, in my opinion. So that's why it feels super unnatural that they put the romance, like, just suddenly out there. Aoi-san said she was going to put Asuka through all the practice match matches she could. You're telling me Inui accepted one of those? If so, it might not be a bad idea for us to just go ahead and propose a practice match of our own. You mean Inui did? So Inui took an interest in Asuka. No, I'll bet it was her second, Irina, who did. She did say all those things about her back at the summer tournament. Yeah, her backing must be super rich. You're the only one who can go faster than light speed, Prez. Don't you know anything about Inui Shirase-san? Zっと気になってはいたけど、仕事柄関係者と話すことが多いからFCの情報は店にいるだけで入ってくるんだけどね。うん、ちょっと調べてみようかな。
それでヘリで乗りつけてどうなったんですかクラシナ君と試合をさせろって言ってきたんだ合宿以降クラシナ君はうちで練習することが多かったからね So more than one match huh? Must be because her only other training partner was Mashiro. All because Misaki and I left. A dull pain spreads through me. I can't tell if it's regret, self loathing, malice, jealousy, or what. Asuka's smiling face floats across my mind. The smile of someone tru who truly loves FC. I take deep breaths to blow away the pain. There's no turning back time, and there's no point in dwelling on the past. Right now, I have to focus on Misaki and only her. To do otherwise would be to do a disservice to both her and Asuka. Kagami sensei was in favor, but Kurashina kun will definitely do it. I guess Inui's second was Irina san, but who was Asuka? Asuka's? Aoi san? Irina kun was Kagami sensei, but he said it was okay. The second was a student of Kyoshi, so. Kagami sensei has a skill of Skywalker. So, what did Mashiro do? I'm with Sato-kun. Sato-kun? Oh, you mean Sato-in-san? Those two are going to be a good one. Sato-kun is going to be a good one. I'm going to be a good one. I'm going to be a good one. I'm going to be a good one. So they ended up hitting, hitting it off, huh? Satoin-san sure is open-minded. Being able to accept her defeat and become friends must be tough. It is? What? I don't think so. I think she respects Asuka. I don't think that's tough at all. What the fuck? Does Messiah not have any sense of sportsmanship or something? <laughs> the hell? Can't say I'm all that surprised though. Shindo-san starts the video. By the time the video is over, Masaki is left speechless. We continue to stare at the black screen. Masaki's mouth flaps open and shut for a while as she tries to answer. She looks sober at Mass Skywalker. So she didn't choose to become a full fighter, huh? Yeah, identical. The match went as follows. Asuka jumped to the second line, allowing Inui to touch second and score a point. Inui then proceeded to fly along the next line as fast as she could until Asuka body blocked her. Inui used the recoil from this to gain the height advantage. Realizing that, Asuka immediately jumped to the next line, relinquishing the boy to Inui and making it 0-2. On the third line, Asuka made sure to always stick to a height where she'd be able to block Inui. She changed her height to match Inui's movements as she moved up and down while traveling along the line. Realizing what Asuka was doing, Inui jumped to the fourth line. Asuka touched the boy, making it 1-2. The rest of the match played out with someone shortcutting the moment they lost the height advantage. Final score, 5-7, Inui won. I guess so, but something felt off. Yeah, I agree. There is a reason for that. Misaki audibly gulps. I mean, it's a practice match, so they're, like I said, they're sandbagging. Asuka wouldn't have let the match play out like that if they weren't. She never jumped to the next line so readily when she's trailing on points. Not without trying to put up a fight at least. Everything I know about Asuka tells me she would have done everything she could to come back from a two-point deficit. That's one way of putting it.
You think so too, Shindo-san? There is a sense of panic in Misaki's eyes. Neither of them showing their trump card means we have a we have bigger problems than whether someone was crushed or not. They both displayed how far they could go. But at the same time, they kept their true potentials hidden. You didn't ask Kasuka or Satoin san about it? Shindo san shrugs his shoulders. Misaki exaggerates a pout. He forces a smile. I really am grateful you did. It's a great reference. He's actually like such a good guy. He doesn't need to actually show us this. Shindo-san puts his laptop away in his backpack. You're not gonna watch his training? Actually, Shindo-san, could I have a moment? I wouldn't want to keep you, so how about I walk with you? Misaki, you keep on practicing with mask in the meantime. Misaki mutters, clearly displeased. And this is actually where I'm gonna stop the episode. I should have probably stopped a lot sooner. <laughs> I didn't think that that scene would be um, longer than I expected it to be. So I'm sorry, but it is kind of cliffhangerish, but not that much, right? We just don't know what the hell Messiah is gonna ask uh, Shindo-san here. I actually would have gone past two hours anyway, but I didn't think it would go past two hours and 10 or so minutes. So yeah, so far I am still very much enjoying the story, but it does feel a bit, what's the word I'm looking for? Not as engaging or not as intense as I hope it to be, right? Because, uh, like, uh, Inui is strong, don't get me wrong, but it feels like we're trying to chase after Inui thinking that she's not going to be, like, much stronger than what she already showed, you know? So that's why it feels a bit, uh, strange. It feels very strange. Maybe this is just how it is in sports, in all sorts of sports, you know, not just, uh, FC. But to me, when you're already facing someone and then you know how to counter them, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna win or they're gonna win. It always comes down to what you do throughout the whole match. I don't know. I guess I've never really practiced so hard that I would memorize all the little bits and details that I would have to do in a, say in a five meter or five kilometer race, right? I don't really know how much like a power I should be using at this point in the, in the race. And then at like what minute I should be using all my power and then what I should be doing if I say if I were to go a lot slower than I thought I would. Yeah, I don't know. I guess in my mind, I always just try to do my best in the races without really thinking too much. 
That's why my playstyle is technically similar to how Misaki does her thing. But I'm I'm more of a press kind of thing, so in uh I guess in in like cycling you don't really attack people. Well, you do attack them. That's only if you are in like the last 500 meters of the race or something like that. That's when you try to pull away from the bunch. Which, sorry, I guess I'm boring you guys with my... <laughs> with my um, cycling knowledge. But enough about that. Sorry. So, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Give this video a like if you guys like it. Sub if you guys haven't. Patreon will be getting these episodes early access along with everything uncensored. Which, I guess, next episode might be an 8 scene, considering this is the final chapter already. I just hope that the 8 scenes aren't that many, so they're not gonna, like, uh, make me really have to cut the episodes by a huge chunk. <laughs> and of course, uh, Patreon now has free members for you guys on YouTube that haven't joined as free members. Feel free so you guys can have a taste of the first episodes of future playthroughs. See ya!